it is very obvious that Mr Schofield is not by my side as he normally would be. He is definitely in the building though. This was him arriving earlier this morning. The reason he's not here is that exactly 11am he will begin a mammoth broadcast for something that has never ever been done on British television before. Philip will present a live 24-hour TV marathon taking him right the way through till 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. It's going to be brilliant. He's insane. And it's all for this year's Tech Santa. More on that later in the show. And Go on! <laughs> I missed you. Oh, you good right? gracious. Did, did I miss the some... nudists? You missed the... Well, they had their pants on. Oh, did they? It was a bit disappointing. Because oh, I thought I was just wondering whether anyone had put plastic on the seats. Towels. Yes. <laughs> oh, good How gracious. How are you feeling? Do you know, I feel really, really, really weird. Oh. This feels very strange and surreal. It's like l at the bottom of a mountain. Right. I mean, I am fully aware that there are people up and down the country who do very, very long shifts. So, you know, being on telly for 24 hours may look a little bit simple. I don't know what's happened. We're on the wrong side. We are. That's why you feel funny. I feel I funny. Feel, We're like I Anton feel Deck better now. now. Right, OK. That's good. <laughs> so talk us through the next 24 hours. What are the highlights? Uh, right, OK. Then we'll have a very special uh, secret stunt launch. Try saying that after no sleep. <laughs> and that's at 3 o'clock. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to announce something very, very special on the lunchtime news. Oh, ITV. brilliant. OK. Uh, so, and that's, a, that's an even bigger uh, challenge that I've got coming up. Um, this evening I'm going to be uh, presenting uh, the national weather. Uh, <laughs> I've had a little bit of uh, practice in the uh, ITV weather studio with uh, Lucy Rosami, who's extremely good at it. Yeah, it's complicated. At 8 o'clock tonight I've got a world exclusive George Clooney special Downton oh. Abbey appearance. Going to show you a little bit, uh, little bit of that. Oh, look, I've just noticed the clock disappeared. Yes. Yeah, there it is. It'll be haunting me for a long time. Um, later on, magician <laughs> Ben Handen will be tricking me. Um, and he, uh, there is apparently something very dangerous that I'm expected to do in the middle of the night. Uh, midnight Feast oh. with Davina McCall, that's not the dangerous bit. She'll be great company at the time, so looking forward to seeing her. Then there's uh, Early Hours Agony Advice with <laughs> a comedy twist, that's with Denise Robertson. Can't <laughs> wait for that. As uh, the night clubs are kicking out, we'll just be getting started with a cocktail demo from the famous Mahiki Bar. Sounds good. Yeah, quick sober up because at four o'clock tomorrow morning, Eamon Holmes is going to join us. I'm going to be the first person he sees when he wakes up. <laughs> <laughs> Followed by Steve Wilson, who's picked a short straw, and he's going to be keeping me awake with a, a few blokey gadgets. I mean, that is only a part of, of the whole event, because I'm going to be on Loose Women after this, and Breathe. I'm racing across town to, to be on the news. Oh, my and... gosh. Are you, I mean, I... And do you know what? His wife's here with him. Can I just say? She said she's going to do the full Steph 24 is here. hours now. I, what dedication. We'll see. Well, she's going to bring me a cup of tea at about 3 in the morning, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you're on for 24 hours, what happens to um, all the commercials, or the adverts? Right, OK, so when the... This is... We are using a lot of never-before-used um, technology here. Right. Uh, so, during the adverts, or during the clips, you will still see me live on ITV3. Um, uh, and there is also a live feed playing constantly online. So we're attempting that, that there won't be any breaks in the broadcast. There could be because there are some security areas I'm going to mm. where you're not allowed to broadcast. So there might be a, a couple of moments where we have to drop off air. Um, there's, I think there's, we've got one troublesome lift, which I'm not sure, and one troublesome staircase, oh. which is hard to get a, a, a signal out of. So occasionally we'll, we'll try to be... Uh, fully streamed and broadcast throughout the entire right. time. Right, and talking of um, streams, how uh, will you cope with your um, when nature calls? There was uh, a long meeting the other day about this. <laughs> about weeing. And I'm really quite personal and <laughs> oh, private I'm about sorry. this sort of stuff. Yes. And then suddenly it's become very public. There are strategically placed loos 
throughout the whole of ITV. Obviously, I know where all of them are. I've timed myself. It takes a minute and 40 seconds. <laughs> um, the closest one to here, although obviously I've already been, uh, is, uh, is over here. Um, and that this is our this is our uh, this morning Lou. This is where you've got to run to. Uh, and if it, should I should, <laughs> I haven't seen that. Should I use that one? Then uh, then the door is closed. Uh, so that that's that. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I don't think there was anyone in it. Denise, I um, I think that uh, it's unlikely I'm gonna I'm gonna need that one. I'm drinking very very carefully, okay. not very much. Absolutely no alcohol whatsoever. Oh gosh, no, you no. can't do that. I won't put anything in a flask when I come and visit you at all. Now, when am I seeing you? About eight o'clock, I think. Lovely. Yeah, I look forward to that. Um, it's going to be a, such an experience. But Philip is, of course, going to need support of his own from you. So we need to see your scofies. They are simply a picture of yourself by the telly with Philip in the background. You'll have loads of chances <laughs> in the next 24 hours. Here are some familiar faces showing you. The kind of thing we're oh, hoping thank that you, you guys. will send. Look at that. It's Sharon. Lovely. <laughs> uh, so get your scofie to me on Twitter at ITV Tech Santa. Use the hashtag scofie. Uh, you can go to facebook.com forward slash Tech Santa at ITV. Um, I would love right the way throughout this entire 24 hour challenge. Uh, to, someone texted me yesterday or tweeted me yesterday and said, C Can we tweet you during? It's essential. I yeah. would love to hear from you. If you're up with me in the middle of the night, I'd love to hear from you. Please do get involved. Brilliant. There's so much to squeeze into 24 hours, and it will all end here at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning. Wow. Uh, that's what it's all about. <clears throat> I will show you how to donate in a moment, but first, it is time for Philip to join these volunteers. They are cycling to Lapland under Victoria Pendleton's watchful eyes. Find out why they're not really moving. Next. Go on, then. Right, they're uh, next door uh, in our in our canteen area. Uh, so, uh, so I will. Uh, I think. Can we see them? Yeah, let's have a look. Let's see if we can see. There they are. There you are. Right. Um, I uh, I think you're carrying on on ITV One. Yes. Uh, by the way, I should point out that everything I'm doing is on ITV Three. If you want the whole lot behind the scenes, the whole nine yards, that's on ITV Three. Uh, so I'm off now to go and see our cyclists. Back in a bit. He is going, and here's how you can support Text Santa. To give this five the, pounds, uh, text Santa five to, to seven the, oh seven sixty. You must be sixteen or over, and I'm please ask the bill payers' permission. To donate by phone, call o three hundred one two three sixty sixty. Standard the charges may apply. Please check faster. with your operator. Yeah? Right or you can donate okay, online at the Text Santa website. 100% of your donation will go to the Tech Santa Charities listed on the screen now. There we go. There we go. We're only 10 minutes into Phil's 24-hour live TV marathon, and there is still so much more to come, including the stars of Downton Abbey <laughs> cooking with Gino and some very festive fashion as we announce the winners of our Knit Before Christmas jumper competition. It all continues after this break. Is he good? OK. sound on this haven't we yeah good this is uh, this is now up to the point where all the dressing rooms are for uh, all the when you do the big when they do the big shows in here all the dressing rooms are through there the bigger you are the bigger the room i always get a very small one <laughs> that's why i started in a room i'm used to it Morning. Morning. Steve will pick you up on that. Okay. Thank you very much. One out. And you and Victoria are mics, but you'll need to stick for everybody else. Okie dokie. Thank you. Oh, 
two on the break, for the Yeah. Now I, Tim, yeah. see I told you it was going to be behind the scenes, I, uh, I don't have a, my whizzies very, very quiet. Is yours working? Yeah. This is when you're in television it gets very personal. Something that's stuck in his ear, I'll have in mine now. That's better. Cool. Yeah, good. Okay, thank you. Hiya. Hiya, how are you? Good, how are you? Lovely to see you. Thank you for doing this. Hi, everyone. Just a rehearsal will be on in a second. Richard there. Yeah, hiya, Richard. Hiya, hiya. Right. Hiya, hiya. Start them off. Right. Two fingers. Yeah, okay. There we go. There we go. Welcome back in just a moment. Philip will be meeting Olympic cyclist Victoria Pendleton and her first team of Tech Santa volunteers. And later in the show, we've got a seasonal ditty from the stars of Downton, Elizabeth McGovern and Julian Ovenden. Plus, King Kean has an up-to-date recap from last night's I'm a Celebrity and an exclusive preview clip ahead of tonight's show. But first, Philip has swapped the studio for what's looking like a spin class, Philip. Uh, yeah, it is. This is this is very exciting um, because I'm here with uh, Olympic cyclist uh, Victoria Pendleton, MBE. Victoria is going to explain uh, what what it is that we're actually doing here. Um, Victoria, nine world titles, so you should be well up for this task. I would have thought. Oh, I know these guys. These are brave guys. It's a long way to be cycling. The equivalent <laughs> distance to to Lapland um, and. If anybody can just text, go to their Just Giving page and give them a little bit of support. They're doing a great job to raise so money. So it's not physically possible. Obviously, I'm, I'm talking about distance now, not the fact that we're an island and we've got water. But it's not physically possible in the time to cycle there, is it? No, it's not. But these guys, they're going to try and get as many miles as possible clock up as much money for the Tech Santa charity and uh, they're all up for it. I tell you what, there's been so much noise in this room, they're going to cheer each other on. Well, let's hear from them, shall we? Hello! <laughs> That's a great noise. Well, well done to all of you, because I know that what you can do, if you want to, is, uh, is you can go online, and we'll tell you how to do all of that. Just check out all the websites. Uh, you can actually uh, buy miles for them. So every mile you buy is a mile they have actually completed, if you see what I mean. And that's how they will physically be able to do, to do the challenge. So uh, we've got, um, let's go through some of our, uh, our riders here. We've got Richard. Hello, Richard. Hello. Hi, mate. You, now then, uh, a care supervisor for environmental service company. Yep. Um, wh what made you do this? Um, well, we as PHS, we've uh, supported Together for Short Lives for a few years now. So one of the charities, we, we decided we'll give it a go. Um, earlier this year, we did a, a ride from Birmingham down to Caerphilly, and we raised about £7,000 then, and we're hoping we can at least double that now. How are you feeling about this challenge? A little bit nervous. Um, I'd rather it be out on the street, but yeah. it should be yeah, it would be on the street. Obviously, yeah. you've got nothing to look at. There's no scenery. Yeah, yeah there's no, no milestone that you can give yourself to say, OK, I'm going to get to that bit, then I can have a little bit of a break. It's just literally staring at the wall yeah. and giving it as much as you can. Good luck Thank to you, you and your team. Let's move down now. We've got Major Paul Spanner. There's a spanner in the works. Hey! 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 How are you? How are you? <laughs> Uh, well, tell us, uh, tell us where you're actually from. Uh, NCHQ down in Portsmouth. Right, and, uh, and we brought guys from the Royal Navy Royal Marine Cycling Association up to. You uh, guys must be so confident that this will not be a problem to you. We're reasonably confident. <laughs> that we can do a decent effort for the Navy and yeah. for the charities that we're representing here today. And you're representing today. Uh, we're representing all of the charities. You're going to do all of yeah, them, yeah? the, the RNRMCA do a lot of work for charity throughout the year, yeah. um, and uh, when the opportunity came up and ride. Uh, in this particular event, we jumped at it. Yeah, well, uh, listen, guys, well, well done to you, and thanks very much indeed for bringing your team along. And then next to you, we've got lovely Sarah, Service Improvement Manager at Marie Curie. Now, you're part of the team that decide where all the money goes, aren't you? Absolutely, yeah. For Marie Curie, all the money we raise will open six new helper services. So we help terminally, terminally ill people in their own homes and their carers and their families. So I'm actually part of the team that will get to spend the money, which is very exciting. Well, we just saw on the... On the VT we showed a moment ago just the incredible work that all the yeah. charities do. Have you done anything like this before? No, I'm already finding it quite uncomfortable <laughs> before I've started cycling. No, I'm not a cyclist, but I'll give it my just best Just sitting shot. there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're joking! So, if everyone could text as well, that will be uh, helpful because that will clock up our miles also. Well, good luck to uh, to all of you. I'm uh, I'm actually going to uh, to start you now. 
Let's dump all those papers uh, for the time being. 31 teams will be attempting to cycle to Lapland on these static bikes for the rest of the 24 hours that I am on air. Lapland is 1,369 miles away. The average person can only cycle up to 18 miles an hour, so it's a nigh-on, as I said, an impossible task. But we are asking you to help them reach their goal. You can buy bonus miles for each team by going to the website where you can pledge your money for miles. One pound will buy one bonus mile. So, so help them get closer to Santa in Lapland and raise money for Tech Santa. Um, you've got your padding all sorted. <laughs> uh, very best of luck. If you are ready, I'm going to start you off, guys. Good luck, all of you. I know you're working in relays. It's an amazing thing you're doing. We'll be stopping off uh, throughout the course of uh, my 24 hours, but I wish you the very, very best of luck. I'm full of admiration. Oh, I just love this time of year. It's the season for giving, which means I get to give you one of the biggest gifts of the year. The chance to win our huge jingle jackpot of £200,000. And to celebrate giving away a ton of tax-free cash, I'm putting on a VIP party for our previous winners so we can catch up and toast the holiday season. I'm Linda, I'm from Stamford in Lincolnshire, and this is my husband, Clyde and I won a BMW convertible and £36,000. I just got in from shopping, and I was just putting it all away and my phone went, and uh, then she told me what I won. And you, you see people on television that have won competitions and you think, gosh, how I'd like to be in their shoes. And here I am, so enter them. So, for your chance to celebrate a very happy, healthy and wealthy New Year with an incredible £200,000 in tax-free cash, text WIN to 8227. Text costs £1.50 plus one standard network rate message. Call 09041 610123. Calls cost £1.54 pence from BT Landlines. Other networks and mobiles may be a lot more. Or post your name and phone number to TMLW49 PO Box 7558 Derby DE10NQ. Entry must be 18 or over. Lines close at 5 pm on Wednesday, the 31st of December. Best of luck, everyone. Yes, the best of luck. Right, once Philip arrives back in the studio, we will be talking to Dr. Dawn. She's here with all these weird gizmos, ready to test his reactions, reflexes, and concentration for a long night ahead. But first, so many of you are getting in touch. Kirsty says 24 hours of the Silver Fox. There are worse Bang. things I could be doing. <laughs> um, Ellie says, I love low, this actually, one. Good luck, they? Philip. Like, Looking forward to my seven-week-old daughter's Celestia. night feeds for once tonight, because she knows that she'll be watching yeah. Philip. Um, Sue says, good luck, look, good luck, Philip. I was actually thinking about phoning in sick to see how the 24-hour TV marathon thing would work, oh. but I probably won't do that. Yeah, so what we're doing um, now there's still is, lots of time for you to Dr. show Dawn your support Arthur's at home. We mentioned and, um, earlier, why not take a scofi? It is the silver fox version of a selfie. Just like these familiar faces are doing now, you just need to take a picture of yourself by the telly with Philip in the background and at some point you need to send it to him over the next 24 hours and he is on Twitter at ITV Tech Santa. You need to use the hashtag scofi and you can go to facebook.com forward slash tech centre ITV. He's not far. He's on his way. You need to talk to me about some of these. I mean, how do you think he's going to go? He's going to be great now. Um, but what I would expect to happen, and let's face it, you know, Philip is at the top of his game, but 24 hours of constant broadcasting, he is likely to find that he will be a little clumsier. So the wire test I would expect to take a bit longer or he'll he'll touch the wire more often. Mm. This one over here, we're literally, he's just got to react quickly and every time a light comes on, he's got to tap it. Mm. And I would expect that he will do less at sort of here four. He here he is, here he is, okay. feeling great. Right, got to be quick. <laughs> Fantastic, you've got lots of support, oh, Philip. Nice. I was just reading that right, out. Okay. Okay. Hello, darling. How are you? Uh, very well. It's a long walk and I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll leave that one to the end then. Okay. <laughs> Should we start with this one over here yes, first? Yes, okay. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'll follow you over, yep. is I'm literally going to start this thing. You stand in front of it, Philip. Yeah. I'm going to press this button and then the light's going to come on and you've just got to tap them as they come on as yep. quickly as you can. OK? Are okay. we ready? Get ready. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Go. Oh, 
a really good game. Yeah. I quite yeah. like that. How long does it go on for? <laughs> 30 seconds. Does it? That is a very long... What does it do, Dawn? So what is this doing? So yeah. all, right, what we're doing now, you've gone... 35, you press 35, 36. Out. So in 30 seconds, you managed to press 36 of those buttons. Right. We're going to do this again in the early hours of tomorrow morning. OK. And see what happens. We're now going to go back over and okay. I'm going to do a very simple... This is very basic, but yeah. I'm going to get you... You take a seat. And I'm going to hold this ruler between... Just between your finger and thumb. And I'm going to just drop it. Look, at my hands point. are shaking. Yeah, so am I <laughs> Well done. OK, so we're going to make a measure of that. That was at five inches. I wouldn't be at all surprised. <laughs> I wouldn't be at all surprised if there's a little bigger, bit further. Look bigger to me. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Philip, this is the last one. What we want you to do is literally... You've seen these... Yeah. That fair We've got one things. on the cube, yeah. and it's my nemesis game. Is it's the it? one that I cannot do on the cube. So well, even I... when I'm not doing 24 hours, I can't do these. <laughs> OK. OK. So we want you to try and do this with, with just holding it with one hand, not oh, two. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and we're going to try and go round now without yeah. touching the wire the at all. The other thing is I've got Carol in my ear saying we've got 30 seconds as well. <laughs> Well so is that just testing That's steady big. hand, or and because what we will expect is after <gasps> touched it, touched it, touched twice. it. Okay, we, I don't. Well, I'm counting. I'm, I'm, it, I'm trying to. <laughs> what I should have done was learn um, from the cube then and adjust my I grip. Expect oh, and again, I'm is rubbish. That you'll become clumsier as you keep going. <laughs> you'll become clumsier as. You get more and more tired because oh, that's what we. Wrong. So your your fine dexterity will go. Your concentration won't be yeah, as good. Yeah, but you can see that I wasn't um, much good at the beginning. I think that's good. Oh, I think that's pretty good. I think you've been. It's a bit the same on as all the cube games. Yeah. I always say to anyone who plays it, get your grip right at the beginning. And if I got my go. grip right, I might have been okay. Right. So we've we've timed that. You touched that. Was it three or four times? Three times. Three times. Okay. Mm. Was it three? It's not bad. bad. <laughs> it's not okay, bad. It'd be really interesting to see. So we're going to meet up again. At Four, yeah, 50, see if I'm any to right. see if, if things because you know, what you're doing is major and um, you. you're going to find that you might get a little bit irritable mm. too many people talking in your ear might be oh, I'm used to that. I miss them when they're not <laughs> <laughs> I'll catch up with you later in the night okay, then we'll do okay it. thank you uh, the point of those tests was to set a benchmark for what's to come <laughs> not a particularly good one <laughs> as I go through the night with no sleep dawn will be joining me again at around four o'clock tomorrow morning to repeat those tests still to come Welcome back. In October, we launched our Knit Before Christmas festive jumper competition. And we had so many entries. In a moment, Rylan, the reindeer here, will be presenting the three finalists. Where's your red yeah. nose? <laughs> yes. <laughs> How were they chosen from all those designs? Gok One explains. You guys have been absolutely incredible. I have been given the impossible job of doing the first edit on our Christmas jumper competition. I do now need to whittle it down to three. And then those three designs will go over to our knitters. They'll get created in real life. And then Philip will be choosing which one is the overall winner. The first one is this gorgeous little number there. I love the fact that on the front, I can't work out whether it's a Christmas bauble or an Easter egg. That's kind of like two seasons in one, so well done. Double your money's worth. The second one I'm going to choose is the penguin. So that's definitely going to make it through. Believe it or not, sometimes the most simple ones are the better ones. Uh, the third one is this one, the silver fox. It's 3D. The whole tail comes alive and is made out of fluffy wool, exactly what you want at Christmas. I've just been given the three jumper designs and I think they're amazing, it's really exciting. There's lots of colour and lots of fun uh, and uh, it's going to keep Philip really nice and warm. I've been knitting them with my team of crack knitters and some friends and some people who come to the shop for our knitting group. Uh, yeah, I'm a bit worried. We've only got a few days to make these but I think, um, I think if it comes to it we just won't sleep. For a few days towards the end. Oh, I'm very excited. Amazing. Right, we're going to have a look at those final three and to help Philip see the designs, we found three silver foxes of our very own so you can see how you wear them. This is why they Ultra were in the corridor look alike. <laughs> Proper look-alikes. You reckon? I, I reckon. <laughs> I, said, I said good morning, Phil, to all three of them this morning. Let's have a look then. Um, so first up, we've got Neil. Neil, come on out. 
This is the Christmas ball ball pom pom jumper. Oh, now, oh. this was our youngest entry. This is from Aaliyah, age seven, from West Yorkshire. That's and uh, her entry had two different patterns on the front. So, the front of the jumper uh, is the ball ball, and it's different to the back because on the back, we've got a present. Oh, I love it. Present, oh. we've got some ball balls on the sleeves. What thank do you think? You, thank you, Al Aaliyah. Alia, Alia, and, and your name we should just say is is it's Neil. Neil. Yeah. Neil. And Neil. Your wife nominated you. Yes. You're from good old Oldham. Yes, yes, she did. <laughs> she did. Thankfully. You're nice modelling it very well. If only yeah. I knew that I could do as well as you have just done. Uh, well done. Just point over there like that. I don't. Do Excellent. That. Uncanny. No, that's what they do in catalogue books Jump and around. things. <laughs> Thank you. Next one. Thanks, Neil. Right. Next yeah. up, we've got Ollie. Come on out, Ollie. Hi, Ollie. Look at this. This is Flip the Penguin. And it's, Flip. it's your head is on the penguin. This is why we absolutely love it. This is from Wendy from Preston. And Wendy says, this is the year of the penguin. We're referring to a certain department store Christmas advert. Yeah. Uh, I think it would make him look cute, cuddly and irresistible, so people will have no choice but to donate to Tech Santa. Aww. I think that's fabulous. Has it got a back on it? What's it? Let me have a spin, Ollie. Oh, it's you know got what? a Leah. Look you know at the backs of his feet. Back I love that. You know what Turn I love about again, this jumper? Might have missed that. Spin round, Ollie. There you go, look. And Neil, Neil, you're from Solly Hull and you've been nominated by your wife as well. Mm. Ollie, Ollie loves mm. it. Oh, yes. that's, Ollie. that's the wrong way round. I've got it here. Oh, have you? Can I just say, do you know what I love about this jumper? I haven't got to wear a scarf with it. Comes oh, with perfect. It. Love it. Laughing. Next one. Thanks, Ollie. Uh, let's bring out Gerard. Come on, Gerard. Now, oh, this Ollie. is the silver Neil. fox Penguin. at Christmas, right? Oh. Now, this is from Mandy in Suffolk. <laughs> Mandy says the planet is that it'd look festively cool, a little bit sophisticated, and a little bit glamorous, just like Phil. I think that's a beauty. But the most important thing here we've got to mention is that Gerard and his team of eight volunteers actually knitted these final jumpers for and you. And is it, is it true it took 50 hours? Oh, at least 50 hours on each jumper, at least. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Eight volunteer knitters, 15 balls of wool. Yes. Look at that, they, they are. Look, I'm going. Look, Look at that. Jumpers need a nana's touch. They're loving it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving it. So, thank you very much indeed. Thank, thank you. you. Did we get your names the wrong way around there? This is yes. Neil yeah. and this is Ollie. No, yeah. I think it's the, it might be the other way around, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's Ollie. 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 I'm Ryland. Good. Lovely to see you. You're Phil. <laughs> Thank you, John. Um, <laughs> right, notes. Uh, so, do, uh, do, 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 if I've got to make a decision here. Right. Um, I, How can you uh, choose? I think, I think, if I'm honest, um, bearing in mind they're all so good in different ways, I, uh, I'm going to wear each one uh, between now and the end of the show. Yes! How about that? Yes! How yes. about that? So, in my eyes, in my eyes, I'm not going to split them, they're all winners. That we love it. I'm selecting all of That's them. Your work. Right, so I'm going to put the first jumper on then in that case during the break. Still to come. Brilliant.
Welcome back. No matter how many decorations <laughs> uh, we put up in the next few days, our homes will never quite match the Christmas spectacle that uh, Downton Abbey has in store this year. We'll talk about that in a moment. First, the cast have not only decked the halls, they've also hit the charts. And here to perform the first Noel are Elizabeth McGovern and Julian Ovenden. <laughs> Welcome, and oh, lovely to see you. Lovely to see you. <laughs> Come and have a seat. <laughs> you have a seat. Come and have a seat. You are well out of your comfort Hello. zone on Sunday night, like aren't you? Because wouldn't you normally, with your band, it's Sadie and the Hotheads, isn't it, Sorry. your band? Yes, it is. So yes. you would normally have the band behind you yes. and the guitar and the whole thing. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Head banging. I'm where, glad you said it at me. Whereas you, you were classically trained. You were chorister. At I St. was Paul's. over the over the river at St Paul's mm. Cathedral. Yeah. So w when this idea was pitched, let's do a Downton uh, Abbey Christmas album. Yes. How many people had their hand up straight away? Maggie Smith. Straight away. <laughs> <laughs> hip hop. A hip hop version of Good King Wenceslas. <laughs> <laughs> Has she listened to it? <laughs> Has the dowager listened? Who no, knows? Sure. <laughs> sure, I'm sure it'll be in her Christmas stocking. I'm sure it will. Mm. Um, and Jim Carter, Mr. Carson, he's uh, he's recorded a, uh, a it's like a spoken Rex Harrison type. It was the night. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. a gorgeous yeah. reading of. Mm. Yeah. Well, it's absolutely story. lovely, and that uh, that's the Downton uh, Downton album for you. Uh, you've got a tour coming up, haven't you? When with we your do. band? When are you touring We're going in America? to the USA. <gasps> yes. Thank you for mentioning it. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Uh, millions of viewers uh, worldwide are looking forward, of course, to the Christmas Downton so episode. So we've got a preview for you in just a moment. Here's a look back, first of all, at Downton's year so far. Heavens, there's Charles Blake. 
What's he doing here? I want you to come up to London tomorrow. Your wish is my command. He was not in my room by my invitation. I'm glad you're still awake. Send a clean message and he'll go. I promise. And you never thought to tell me that I have a third grandchild. You looked at that little girl and you never thought it was my business too? What would you have done if Lady Grantham had asked me to stay? I'd have suggested it myself. If you have never given a woman the wrong impression, then by all means, stay away. Otherwise, I expect you back in my room tonight. Try not to be an ass, Charles. Oh, all this endless thinking. It's very overrated. What was oh, lovely classic. in the last series is that uh, the Cora actually, we got to know her a bit more, didn't we? Mm. Thank you. I, th I had a really fun time playing her last year for, the, for that reason. Because mm. she has a real a... backbone, I yeah. think. Yeah, oh, well, I'm glad to hear you say that. And she, she is, does have a personality separate from wife and mother. You know, we all do, secretly. <laughs> so, um, well, a nice little bit of, you know, a little bit of flirting, a little bit of, yeah. you know, some ructions in the marriage, of course. Yeah, yeah. And you, um, did you start in series four? Se yeah, four. That's, yeah. That's so, right, yeah. so what was that like to join something when you walk in and it's already set up and running? Terrifying. Was it? Well, in a way, because it's got become such a phenomenon mm. but actually because it's people like Elizabeth it's very welcoming and very relaxed and easy and it's lovely it's a family it's like um, right in I promise you <laughs> <laughs> I suppose we should say are you staying Julian I have no I have no idea oh, there's a lot <laughs> I wish I, I wish I knew there's a lot of oh. unfinished business there's no question there seems to be um how, how much are you in the Christmas special I don't think I'm not, not in the Christmas much, no I, my character went to Poland on a Yes. Mini break. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit handy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit cold. <laughs> so, so tell us about uh, tell us about the, the the Christmas special. This it's set in uh, 1924. It's the autumn of 1924. Of course, we know that Anna is now behind bars. I'm uh, assuming. Um, and uh, and are you in a completely different location? We do. We go for a shooting party to Scotland to one of the most beautiful castles I've mm. ever seen, and I have since we began the show, seen quite a few castles. Yeah, this one <laughs> cake. That was the winning Satanic. castle so yeah, far, Yeah, I, I have to say, it is stunning. So the, the show is going to look absolutely gorgeous. Which one was it? What was the, what was the name of the castle? It's Anik. Anik. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. That is yeah. a beautiful one. Mm. And, uh, and, and what, else can you, what else can you tell us about, uh, about the special? Well, I can say that we end on a very warm, Christmassy happy sad yeah. note yeah. and i can say that um there aren't any sudden <laughs> <laughs> nobody <laughs> dies nobody wants to go to hollywood this Aww. season just like that I... <laughs> my lips are sealed yeah okay now that's good enough that's good enough for me oh. have we got a clip we have look look have. at this how is this for exclusive here's a bit of a clip now for rose's sake we must all be on our best behavior i agree Cinderby always looks as if he's spoiling for a fight, whether he is or not. So we must all be careful not to give him grounds for one. I wonder if I was right to come. I don't want to sound like Larry Gray, but I'm not Lord Cinderby's idea of a perfect son-in-law. Stuff and nonsense. We crawlies stick together. For once, I agree with Mary. You'll enjoy it when we get there. Besides, you're a good shot. Any host will forgive a lot if you get the numbers up. What is it? Can I do anything to help? Uh, yes, stop fussing. Love it. Mm. Just love it. And the other thing for the cast must have been a, a, a big thrill because, obviously not for the Christmas special, but for our Tech Santa mm. Christmas special, which is on the 19th of December, George Clooney came down. Um, and you said that uh, that did create quite a bit of excitement on the set. <laughs> you can imagine. <laughs> we were just all a buzz, and he was doing a lot of scripted kissing. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it was... I think we've got a, we have got a picture. And We're going to show you an exclusive clip at eight o'clock this evening on ITV3. But we've just—I think we've got a, a picture of uh, of Mr. Clooney, uh, Mr. Clooney himself, with the mm -hmm. clapperboard. That clapperboard is up for auction, and it's been signed by the uh, the cast uh, and crew. So uh, we'll tell you about that on ITV3 as well. In the meantime, thank you very much indeed. Thank Good you. luck for the album. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having thank us. Thank you. Right, taking a, a break now. Gino is standing by with a slow release treat <laughs> that should <laughs> see me. <laughs> <laughs> I dread to think <laughs> through the next few hours. Uh, it's a mushroom risotto. That's coming up on his menu right after the break. Don't go away.
Welcome back. We have had so many scofies and you're trending. Oh, which oh is really? Brilliant. Karen in Caxton a good way, in a good way. Yeah. Um, oh, apparently none of them are ready oh, to show right. anybody we'll do some else. Oh, we'll off my phone in that case. But, oh, no, now we've got now them. Now we've got them. Karen Ca are you joking me? <laughs> now we have... No, we don't. Are they there? Good luck, Scoff. I can just show... Can anybody Well, they're quite small on there. They're very Let's little. Let's have a look. Let's see. There you go. Who's ah, that? That's oh. Karen Catton. She says, good luck. And then there's ten-week-old Matilda saying nothing because she's only ten weeks. Oh. And look, so the nice. editors of This Morning and Tech Santa, Pete Ogden and Helen Dower, have sent you one from the... Look at that. Beautiful lighting. That's gorgeous. Can I show yes. one off my phone? Is that OK? This is uh, Fiona Shackleton. Who says uh, good luck, Philip? And she's got. Look at that. There you go. There's the, there's Fiona. Yay! Oh. Thank you very much indeed. With the last jumper, I've got the next one on now. Gino is here. So, well, uh, um, well done, Philip. That's going to be you. fantastic. So, did I get this right? I just can go tell home. Tell us what you're cooking because we've got a competition. So it's just to, just to, just to know. what you're I'm going to make a risotto with wild mushroom because that is your favourite thing ever. Yeah. And I also got you from Italy a beautiful white truffle to shave it on top. This is all special for you. You this are, is all for you. You're the best man in the world. Thank this you very much indeed. You. We'll start cooking right after today's yes. competition. And how about an instant cash release in our prize draw? We'll give... Christmas comes but once a year, and so does the chance to become rich beyond your wildest dreams. It's the totally terrific, totally tax-free £200,000 jingle jackpot. And this week, you have the chance to make it all yours. And if you're thinking, Alison, that would never happen to me. I'm inviting some of our previous competition winners to our massive Christmas party so they can give us an insight on winning big. I'm Mandy from Kent, and this is my husband, Chris, and I won £120,000. I've had an amazing year, I've paid off all my mortgage, I've given up work, and it's been just fun. Just enter. Just enter it. You can win. I won, you can win. So you've got nothing to lose. So if that's giving you a winning feeling and you fancy the chance to bank £200,000 in tax-free cash, text WIN to 8227. Text costs £1.50 plus one standard network rate message. Call 09041 610 Calls cost £1.54 pence from BT Landlines. The networks and mobiles may be a lot more. Or post your name and phone number to TMLW49, PO Box 7558, Derby, DE10NQ. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 5 pm on Wednesday, the 31st of December. Best of luck, everyone. Gino is here. So, there once is. I just want to make. Because, did I get this right? So, I can go home tonight yes. and I can get a picture of myself with you and just send it to anyone. The, well, the don't self. send it to just anyone because they may not orange. reply, but you can send it to the tech centre. And I can do whatever I want, whatever picture I want, <sighs> as far as you are in the picture. Yeah, there's no guarantee, obviously, thinking about where you're going with this, yeah. it'll be shown on the telly, but nevertheless, yes, you can. Should Anything we bet you like. that we're shown on the telly? The details are there, there if go. anyone else wants to send us uh, We'll make sure that you are fully aware of all those details. OK. And I look forward to getting your all right. scofi later on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a scofi. Please Let's look at the terms one. and conditions. <laughs> <laughs> go all for right. it. Now, when we do a, risot a risotto, where do we start? First of all, stock, OK? Mm. Vegetable stock, or in this case, you could have used mushroom stock. OK? Absolutely fine. Stock cube. Don't go out of your way by boiling vegetables. If you want to do it because you got leftover vegetables, it's fine. Otherwise, stock cube, absolutely fine. Now, in here we go onions and mushroom. Look at this beautiful array of mushrooms. A okay, array? Because, yes. Or an array. <laughs> OK. <laughs> you say array, I say array. My one is better. Array. Array okay? for mushrooms. So, there you go. Porc <laughs> beautiful uh, uh, porcini, uh, uh, shiitake, uh, um, black one. This one they call purplets. Are they bluets? Are Blu they bluets? Are they bluets? Or, uh, in Italy we call purplets. Do you? So mm. they are very very beautiful. Then you yeah. got the oyster one. You can you can choose whatever Hello? wild Hello? mushroom you want. What? What? Okay. <laughs> what? Now what we doing? Onions, slice the mushroom, put them in the pan, and start to sizzle everything together. At this point, there is one very important thing that we need to add to toast the rice. Often people make the mistake when they make a risotto, they do not toast the rice. No, I don't, no. I'm using arborio. You can use the carnaroli one as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, but a good risotto rice will do the job. The way to do it is very simple. You put the rice in there, okay, like this. And then what you do, slowly, slowly, you toast the rice into the flavor, into the oil, into the onion, into the uh, uh, mushrooms. And you need to do that for a good couple of minutes. Yeah. Because what's happening, if you take the grain of the rice, 
by toasting it with oil, the outside it becomes translucent, mm. okay? But the inside is nice and starchy and is nice and al dente, and that's what you want to achieve, okay. okay? So you put it there, let's pretend that a couple of minutes are gone by. I'm gonna put a little bit of thyme leaves, and this is perfect for you. Very slow uh, uh, energy Release. release. Yeah. Risotto. I In love risotto. But Steph, my, my wife makes fantastic risottos. I could eat them all the time. Oh, it's, it's, it's one of these things that people say it's a difficult thing to do, but okay, you just need to get the idea of how to do it. Well, they have it's to a be one pot thing. It's simple thing, as well. You could just put um, uh, onions and peas in there or something, you know, so anything. Any, I, my mum used to do risotto of with butter she did. and parmesan. Yeah. Just butter and parmesan, That's delicious. which is absolutely delicious. It's the thing. The secret is, isn't it, not to make it too, too watery. Water. Okay, this is the secret, okay? You put the flame up, the rice has been toasting for a couple of minutes, and this is the only thing you have to do. Stock into the rice. One, okay? One. Look, it's bubbling away. You stir it. Mm -hmm. As soon as all the liquid has been absorbed, Go in and add a little of stock. Simple as that. And this is the technique this is the, for the uh, amount of time I've got left remaining. So uh, this will be my first meal of um, of the 24 hours. What does that say? 22, 22 hours, 53 three minutes. minutes. <laughs> oh my okay. goodness! This good, is your good. first meal. Okay. Now, of course, we are not going to wait for 20 minutes. I've got one already prepared here. The way to do it is to make sure that the rice, the grain of the rice, is still nice and al dente. Okay? okay? So at this point, look what's happening. You put the stock, you start to mix, and it will start to bubble very, very slowly. So you should constantly okay? stir it then. Constantly. Not really. Look what I've done here. You stir it a little bit, then you put it, you put a spoon there, you add another little of stock. Right. It, 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 you know, when people say you need to be 20 minutes content, that's not true. No. You stir it a little bit, then you step it away. Yeah. But now, what's the secret to make the risotto creamy? Because people, they always say, you can put mascarpone cheese, you can put double cream. That is not the way to do so, it. So, Gino, what is the way to make a risotto creamy? Good question, <laughs> Philip. Good question. OK. <sighs> How to do it is very simple. You put a little bit of stock in there. Now, this technique is called mantecatura, mantecare. And what mantecare is? Butter and parmesan. OK? So, the first thing you do, you get the butter, it goes straight in there. As soon as the butter goes in, you switch off the heat. This is the okay? most sensible cooking slot you've ever done. Well, because I want to make sure people at home understand. He's cooking my lunch. I know, it's very unreal. We don't have to help. I'm just trying to figure out when I get... When, when do I get time to eat this? Uh, you just well, go around with the bowl. Nobody's going to say anything. I thought of that. Yeah. Now, mantecare. Look, it's when you pick up the pan, and you're going to have to make sure you twist it very, very quickly into the risotto. By doing this, what's happened? The butter and the parmesan, they get together with the starch of the rice. And all of a sudden... That would be all over my oven. All this me now. creaminess. Oh, no, no, come on, you can do it, look. Oh, mantecare, 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 mantecare. Mantecare, mustard and mantecare. <laughs> OK, that's the way to do it. So, it's gone anywhere. This is called mantecare, and you do this, for 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you do this for about 30 seconds. Yeah. Okay? Oh, Look, got a nice mantecatura, so it's all beautiful and creamy, the way it should be. Yeah. Now, what you want to do at the end, I've got some mushrooms that um, are fried in thyme, butter, and a little bit of salt and pepper. 45 seconds. Those goes know. in there, OK? You mix them at the end, so then you, you leave the texture of the risotto. Yeah. And then the only thing that you have to do, I'm going to use this one. You pick it up. Oh, it looks amazing. Yes, and it goes straight and onto your shape. But look at the creaminess of this risotto. Guys, this is exactly what you want to achieve. Then, of course, if it's in your budget that you can well, spend um, about 100 pounds for this for little... That? Look, It'd for be this even little more than Well, it's 70 euro from Italy. Then we had to spend money to bring to it ship. into the country, to ship into the country. But this... You because can buy the oils in a supermarket. I know they're not as good, but if you want the taste of it, the if you want nobody, it. nobody can afford um, a, a, a no. white. Uh, a you know white what? Chocolate. Nobody can afford. It looks like a flake. It looks like one of those chocolate flakes. It looks like a chocolate. But when uh, uh, when you say to me that you want a mushroom risotto, delicious? I said I'm going to have to fly. Like I, I'm feeling a little bit peaky. What? So I, I don't think I will today. No, well that's good, no. good for me. But, but I'm quite happy to do some links for you if you want. Mm. 
so you can mm -hmm. actually eat it, Philip. Oh, do 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 Will the link. Be all right. Details no, of Gino's it. recipe are on the oh, website sure. itv.com. Straight after the break, they brought a whole new meaning to the phrase water closet. We've got last night's I'm a Celebrity trial next. Eat. I have. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> I love that we've got two other men here and another man, and you're both poor. This is exciting. And I am, so that's three. Any other men? Where? Where? Oh, another bald man! I'm going to come over there. I'm coming over there, yeah. I just want to get these. Yeah. That's why they reckon my husband is five foot two. But no, it's just because I'm really tall. Ladies, Amanda. Yes. We're going into coffee time. Coffee time. Is this better than the one we spent last? Again. <laughs> Yeah, can I have a quick look? Hello, Philip and Amanda, where were we all standing yeah, then? Here, I just felt like I had my back to everyone. <laughs> Hi, Philip, it's Ruth. Hey, are you standing Hi, Phil, it's Ruth here. Hi, look, yes, you're all right. <laughs> I'm coming to get you, I've got gin and brandy in my hip flask. Yes. Hop in that. Tom's got it all set. Is it all set? So it's all, all on. Jump in. Just, just straight off, and then you cut away from Hold me. How long am I on that buggy? Yeah, they've are, they've Can I just have a look at this? Can I have a look at the thing? Uh, can you go back and help see the top now? Yeah, hello, Philip and Amanda. We're honoured to be the first programme outside your home show. Your home show. Your home.
own show. What does that mean? The own show. Your show. Uh, to host your Czech Santa Marathon. And as you can see behind me, I have transport. No, that's not behind me. No. That's not behind <laughs> I could be your transport. Well, as you're about to see. Now I've got tra transport. I've got transport ready to come and pick you up and whisk you back here. We've got to get you here by 12 30. It's when we are on air. Oh, by the way. Yeah. And are you going to go off? Are you going off? Because I'm reading your autocue. When you say transport, do you want to say it? Is this, but are you going on six? Okay.